What's going on everyone? It's Dan here and I want to welcome you guys to my top five best games of 2022. Uh, it's year end and now we're finally getting started on the top countdown videos, uh, compilations, one of my favorite times of the year. Obviously, this is going to be covering my favorite games of this past year in 2022. Now, obviously, these are 100% my opinions, so your list is going to differ, could differ from mine. Uh, but keep in mind as well, I also have to have played the game and it also have had to have come out in 2022. So it can't make this countdown unless the game was released this year and I played it this year. If I didn't play the game, I can't really throw it into the countdown. Obviously, there was a lot of stiff competition this year. Uh, some games, that might not make my count on simply just because I didn't play them that I know probably would be on this list if I had. Who knows? Everyone's different. So these are completely my opinions and exclusively to that. So just keep that in mind. Now keep in mind as well, I will be throwing in a honorable mentions at the end of the video for games that I just felt like they were not quite good enough to make the cut, but they are good enough to check out. And I do recommend that you do check them out at some point if they are your cup of tea. Other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy my top five best games of 2022. Coming in at number five on the countdown, we've got LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now this game is much more than a remake, remaster, in fact it is a reboot of the LEGO Star Wars games of old. The difference is it's a completely different engine, uh, the gameplay style is completely different, it is such a massive game, it, it will span hours upon hours to complete. If you want to go for 100% completion like I did, it will take you a very long time. So the bang for buck here is exceptionally good. There's more than just the main story though that spans across all nine of the films. There's still that kind of style where you collect mini kits and, and studs and all that with multipliers and things like that you can unlock as time goes on. There is that, like I said, in the main story, but there's side missions across each planet. It takes a while to 100% complete this game, let me assure you. There's a lot of content here, you're gonna get your money's worth. The only downside, obviously, is that there were some performance issues at launch, and obviously some of the missions do get a little grindy. Some of the side missions, you're doing the same thing over and over again, unfortunately, but that's to be expected. It still is a lot of fun and highly worth your purchase, which is why it comes in at number five on the countdown. Coming in at number four on the countdown, we've got Gran Turismo 7. Now, I don't normally put racing games on my countdown because from game to game, franchise to franchise, they're all relatively similar to a degree. However, GT7 stands out so very much, especially considering I grew up playing the Gran Turismo games when I was younger. Now, over time, GT did lose its muster a little bit, it lost its way a little bit, but it comes back so strong with GT7 that I can't not put it on this countdown. The co vehicle customization, the vehicle detail, everything that it did really, really well is advanced upon. And yet they've also returned with the GT simulation mode or the GT mode as it once was known in the form of a campaign. So there's more than just the regular racing that it's known for. It adds like a campaign and kind of a story element to it, which it doesn't need to do. The gameplay is phenomenal. Everything about it, you can play this game with a controller and have fun. You don't need a racing wheel. It is a solid racing game. And if you're into cars, if you're into sim racing, even if you're not into sim racing, you got to give this one a go because it truly is worth your time. There's a lot of fun and just enjoyment to be had with this game, which is why it comes in at number four on my countdown. Coming in at number three on my countdown, we have got Stray. Now, I'm sure a few of you guys could probably guess that this was gonna make top five. Honestly, it is probably one of the most unique games you're gonna play in your lifetime, if you get the chance. You play as a cat, and a cat who's been separated from his family, and you have to make your way back to them in, in any way you can. And you end up developing uh, relationships along the way in a now robot-dominated world. There's no more humans left, and they are basically their identities are transferred to robotic beings. But what's interesting about this is cats remain to be cats regardless of what happens in the world, which is why it's so phenomenal. As a cat owner and lover myself, I can relate to this game so very much and it honestly gives you a really good story without the cat ever really doing anything. You can understand the struggles and, and the trial that the cat has to do. And 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 it, it's also like it's a puzzle game on top of it. So you have to figure out puzzles as a cat using these robot companions as well that you meet along the way. And there's tons of little secrets and little hidden goodies here and there. And it's one of those games 
that really does like i remember i, I broke into tears just in the, like the first like 15 minutes of the game not even just because of something that happened so it's an emotional ride it's beautiful it's very well made and like i said it's one of the most unique games you will ever play and I, even if you're not into those sort of games and if you're not like a huge cat fan or whatever you still got to give it a go just for the mechanics and the style of the game super unique super fun and it's not going to take up too much of your time either it doesn't overstay its welcome that's why it comes in at number three on my countdown Coming in as the runner up, number two on the countdown, we've got Horizon Forbidden West. Now, I was a big fan of the game's predecessor, Horizon Zero Dawn. The character of Aloy and the character she met along the way were truly phenomenal, and you wanted to know more about them. Well, Forbidden West just advances upon all that. Obviously, the game itself is much larger, introducing a larger map. Uh, obviously, new mechanics as well, such as the whole swimming element, which makes there be more diversity in that map so while you can now have a larger map to walk across you can also go into these underwater sections which are just an even more exploratory element to the game um there's tons of main missions there's tons of side missions like it's going to be very difficult to complete absolutely everything much larger game than zero dawn for that but it does such a good job at telling a story because this is such a unique environment. It's like primitive mixed with future. So it's an interesting way of kind of going about it. And that's what Zero Dawn was so intriguing about. So Forbidden West had to advance upon that. And I'd say it did it very well with really good character development, solid new characters. And obviously they've reintroduced characters from the previous game and give them a bit more insight to why they're doing what they're doing or where they came from. So absolutely phenomenal game. However, the one thing I will say that hindered it was ironically how big it was. It was so big to the point where a lot of the missions felt very repetitive and grindy but in terms of the gameplay itself the mechanics the new introductions uh, the combat the storytelling it's all top-notch but unfortunately this game it was released alongside a lot of big contenders this year so it would have you know fared a lot better I think if it trimmed that fat but still a phenomenal game you got to check it out that's why it comes in at number two And finally, coming in at number one for my top five best games of the year, the number one spot goes to God of War Ragnarok. Now, this is a game I think no one is really surprised to see on my number one spot. Uh, obviously, I had an absolute blast with it. Played it from start to finish, 100% completion, doing absolutely everything. And honestly, it was one of those games that 100% completion did not feel like a chore. The extra content, the side content was almost felt like you had to do it. You'd be silly to skip it. It was one of those things like they do it so well that it's like this basically is main story quality, but it's optional and that is absolutely amazing and obviously doing that that gave you an advantage throughout the rest of the game and it made the game way more enjoyable and it felt like you were more powerful when boss fights came so i was pretty much maxed out where you know wearing some of the best armor by the time i beat the game and it, you know you just feel better as you're playing these kind of difficult sections you feel stronger and you get better as a player even though some of them can be a little frustrating but they just make you a better player like i said and they it is one of those circumstances where it is super rewarding to do it you know it's not one of those things like oh man i could do without that you guys know me i tell you that all the time i don't need that kind of satisfactory feeling it doesn't do it for me this one did <laughs> so you got to check it out for that alone obviously though the characters atreus kratos they're back with all of their friends they met along the way advancing on the story from the first game or the 2018 reboot i should say which was also my number one game of that year uh they had big shoes to fill while well, some people say they went in kind of the wrong direction i think they took it in the right direction uh you felt such an emotional connection to these characters when tons of things happened um you find out new things it's a story of like friendship character development father son the father son bond is so amazing in this game it's it's phenomenal to see kratos kind of break out of his shell with that rough exterior and form these bonds with his family and friends and obviously though there's like there's the killer villains that you really that you, you get introduced to in this game and obviously ones from the past ones that you're aware of and mentioned throughout it's just such a fun game it is so good you guys got to try it out it's obviously no surprise why it's my number one spot. Definite game of the year, in my opinion. All right, guys, there you have it. My top five best games of 2022. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of my list. If there's anything you would change, I'd love to hear it. Let me know your best games in the comments below as well. Uh, I did mention as well, 
that I'd be throwing up in honorable mentions. Well, here you go. These are games that I think you guys should at least try out or check out at some point in time. They weren't quite good enough to make my top five, but they were good enough for me to throw them out there. And I wouldn't want to people not to check them out just because they weren't quite there. You know what I mean? There are a lot of really solid games that fly under the radar, unfortunately, and I think they should get some recognition. So even though they didn't make the top five, they are games that I think you, you guys should definitely play. So be sure to be on the lookout for those ones as well. So yeah, those were my opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Um, I had a lot of fun this past year. 2022 had a had a lot of great games and there was a lot of fun moments, obviously. So it was, it was awesome to share it with you guys. So thank you so much for watching those series and obviously hanging out and watching this video with me. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like on it and make sure, like I said, you comment. Let me know what you guys thought of the list. Is there anything you would change? Is, is there, you know, did you, do, do you agree with my list? Is what, What's your list? What are you giving top five? Throw it in the comments. Let me see it. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do subscribe and turn on those post notifications. That's with that little bell icon if you haven't done so already. Uh, otherwise, you might miss out on some of the content because YouTube's algorithm doesn't always tell you, even if you have all this stuff set. So give it its best chance by turning on those, uh, those notifications. Make sure you select all so you don't miss anything I put out. Also, be sure to like and follow my pages on social media. I got a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and a Discord linked in the description below. If you want to get a shirt or hoodie of mine, there's a link in the description. Also, an embedded feature right below this video. You can scroll down and actually see some of the things I have on there. A uh, big shout out to all the sponsors of the stream, of course. DX Racer, Bones Coffee, Always Bearded, The Ridge Wallet, Mad Rabbit Tattoo, and Jinx Custom Controllers. I use all those guys' products every single day, and you can check them out for yourselves. With the links in the description. Make sure you're using my promo code DANKY1000 to save at checkout with them. Finally, guys, be sure to sign up and check out the Team 8000 membership program. If you haven't done so already, it does support the page a lot. There are four tiers available, an entry basic, premium, and ultimate level. All four of those tiers have a wide variety of perks. Obviously, the higher up the list you go, the better and more perks you're gonna get for your money. But that entry level is 99 cents, the cheapest and easiest way to get into the program. Uh, you will get things like custom badges by your name, custom emojis to use in chat, exclusive video and stream access, prior and open lobbies, giveaways, discounts, and plenty more. Let's work towards our next major milestone. Keep those memberships coming in. If you're already a member, consider gifting memberships to other people you have to be on desktop for that they don't have it on mobile just yet but you can gift anywhere from one and pretty much i think i can't even remember how high it even goes but it, you can gift i know 50 for sure because it's that's happened in the past so you can this customization options are pretty limitless with that so make sure you give the gift of a dank 8000 membership this holiday season so <laughs> uh, you can join that with the link in the description there's a join button below the video and on my main channel page as well guys thank you so much again i appreciate you all hanging out with me in 2022 i'm very excited to see what we will do in 2023 looking forward to all the games coming out there's a lot of really cool games that i'm excited to be getting my hands on so let's make some more memories and have some more fun all right thank you guys so much for watching until we do that let's hand things over to knox hill have a good one guys Who the man with the plan? Hmm. If you feel trouble while and wild on these violent and hit you eight thousand. Wait a minute, hold that stylist style Dan. Goddamn Billy Jack, we still riding tires flat. I hear them sirens, see shots flying, so we driving fire back. If they ain't vibing, lie with that. Got me dressed up in all black. What up? Hood up, and I see them haters try to run with us and don't need inhalers. Got to breathe them hard just like the Vader players. Grab your respirators, night invaders get like sabered. Mass on for the shooters, move like trash to bed and true. Got that Glock and got them woofers Just press play, I'll keep it moving Who is Knox? Still you damn fools Keep it fresh like canned food There ain't nothing we can't do So tune into that damn Q Yeah It was never, ever A game